On behalf of our team, we would like to welcome you to the report out for the value stream mapping event for the hiring process. A very special thank you to health services personnel in partnership with County Human Resources. So you have all heard the rumors and the complaints. It takes a year or more to hire for a vacant position. We lose candidates we've made offers to because in the hiring process it takes too long. And we want to really investigate whether there is any truth around this. So the very first week, the first part of the week, we started by investigating and discovering what happens in the hiring process. And we quickly discovered that we really can't learn anything about that process without first thinking about what it's like from the customer's perspective. For our purposes, we define customer as a candidate hoping for employment and the hiring manager hoping for a great candidate. Another realization we had this week is that we are all candidates. All of us are um, employees of Contra Costa, and each of us has our own story about that journey. So a value stream map, what is it? A value stream map is a visual representation of a process from beginning to end, including the time it takes, the supplies used, and the communication pathways. A value stream map looks at our process from another person's perspective, allowing us to see that with fresh eyes. It's called a value stream map because we look at it from the customer's perspective, and it's all about value. We want to ensure that the service is provided at the right time, meeting or exceeding expectations. The stream is all about the activities required to complete that process, start to finish. And our map is the visual representation of the process and is verified by walking through the process ourselves. Ultimately, though, this is not just a process map. We're really placing value at the forefront. To use an example from healthcare, value added to the customer is any time a patient spends with their care providers with little to no wait time to receive that care. We can also add value to systems by viewing the system from our customer's eyes. Here are a lot of key terms that you will see and hear throughout this presentation, and here's your cheat sheet. So cycle time is the time it takes to complete one step in the process. Lead time is the total time from beginning to end, including all cycle times and all wait times. And the value added ratio is the value added time divided by the total lead time. I'm really excited for you to hear all the great discoveries made by our team this week and our ambitious goals for the future. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pam Gomez with Contra Costa Health Plan. And as the teams begin the process of mapping, we use these uh, guiding principles to help us through this very technical process. While visiting the HR departments, um, downtown and health service personnel, uh, it was very helpful, especially asking the five whys that allowed us to drill down to allow us to find root causes of many of our issues. Good afternoon, my name is Dorette McCollum and I am the Director of Health Services Personnel and Payroll. And the slide that you're looking at represents a value stream mapping event that we went through in Health Services Personnel in March of 2015. So we wanted to show you kind of what we um, have, uh, what we, where we were and where we are now. So what we looked at was the um, time that it takes from an individual who's being selected by a manager, so let's say I've selected Jane Doe, all the way through the steps to the time that Jane Doe is actually ready to start working. And so as you can see on the slide, there's a lot of computers, so there was a lot of back and forth between county HR and personnel, and you actually also see a car so there was some driving that was involved as well because at that time we were not paperless at all. We were dealing strictly with paper. So we fast forward to 2018 uh, when we uh, started using the NeoGov system to process our transactions paperless rather than using paper. And so our current state has changed and you're gonna see that with this, the upcoming slides. And I do wanna point out again that this value stream map event um, started with from the employee being selected, I want to hire Jane Doe, through the process to when the employee actually started working. Um, with the current state that you're going to see, that's actually going back to when the person actually 
originally applied. They put in their application in NeoGov all the way through the interview process being selected to the time that they are actually ready to start working. Hello everyone, I'm Josh Sullivan and I am honored to be able to serve within the office of the director of our health services department. Like so many here, I have firsthand experience with the confusion, delays, and frustrations inherent to our system as it sits today that you'll hear a little bit more about as we continue forward. I've been a candidate, I've been a hiring manager, and I've been an administrator in a department of over 4,500 people. So what does that look like to meet the needs of a department of over 4,500 people? In 2018 alone, we had 98 recruitment opportunities. Those recruitment opportunities led to over 8,794 applications to be reviewed. That's 8,794 stories that often can be a person's first impression of how we do business as a county. And I think we can do better. Of that 8,794 applicants, 3,536 people became candidates. That resulted in hiring 733 people that often provide critical services to community members who are most vulnerable in Contra Costa County. From that 733 total hires, there are a lot of different types of hiring that happens, and for the lens of this event, we focus specifically on hires from what's called an eligible list, which we'll hear a little bit more about. Good afternoon, I'm Chad Pierce, Program Manager for West County Children's Mental Health. Um, for this value stream mapping event, I served as a hiring manager and offering that perspective. So we had four areas of focus, and as Durrett mentioned, the value stream mapping event from 2015 um, was from process from candidate selection to first day of work. This week, we expanded our scope, and so we did the process from application submitted to the candidate selected. So from the very time that the applicant submits an application to the time that he or she is called for an interview. Then we did process from candidate to selection to the first day of work. So from the time the candidate was selected to the time the first day of work. That process also included the background clearance and credentialing process. And finally, we looked at data. The data included each step of the process, how long it takes to complete each step, um, and then the waiting times between those steps of the process. Hello, my name is Sherry Shipley and I'm from Health Services Personnel. So um, we went in groups to see, or we contacted by phone, the departments involved in our hiring process. We observed, interviewed, and asked why. To be respectful, we explained in advance that they were, we were there to evaluate the systems and not the staff's performance. Here's some pictures of us um, doing our interviews and observations with the main HR, health services personnel, and interviewing a newly hired employee. Good afternoon, I'm Shannon Latner Beasley. I also work within the Office of the Health Services Director on Career Pathways. Um, what you're looking at now are some of the direct quotes from the interviews that we conducted with candidates as well as the hiring managers. And we wanted to do that so that we could also bring some authenticity, their stories and perspectives into a process where they are our primary stakeholders. So for the candidates, we saw some themes. I'll just read a couple so you can get an idea of what we were hearing. The first one says, because of the process, our candidates can feel like the scum of the earth and it feels like the county doesn't want us. So just based on some of the initial interactions, um, we could hear some devaluing as well as um, misinformation. And then also the final one on that one says, there should be clarity about the steps and where you are in the process. I didn't want to interrupt by checking in. So by giving better information, we're hoping to also empower our candidates. We also talked to the hiring managers. Um, and here we saw themes such as we're losing money from funding grants that require us to, hi to hire staff. And then finally, we lose people because they can't wait that long. 
So what we're really hearing is that the relationships that people are starting to make from hiring um, qualified candidates to perform critical services in our communities, those are also delayed and we're not able to get moving on our directives to serve very vulnerable communities. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy Cadell and I'm the clerical supervisor at Health Services Personnel. Um, on our observation visits, we use various tools um, to gather data. One was called a spaghetti map, where you draw a line um, where the staff walk from one area to another carrying out their um, various tasks. As you can see, it ends up looking like spaghetti. Um, another tool we used was a time observation form, and we used this to uh, time the steps of each process, um, get the data that we used to create the various different mappings, and you'll see that in the rest of the presentation. Good afternoon, I'm Gina Solomonier. I manage the medical staff office. During our event this week, we created a current state map for health services personnel and central human resources to better understand the entire hiring process. This allowed us to find possible defects, such as redundancy, processes or forms that may not be needed, or that could be done at different steps uh, that would allow us to decrease the amount of hiring time during the process. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Matt Kaufman. I work with Contra Costa Health Services in the Hazardous Materials Division. Uh, we created a current state map and it identifies all the steps in our process from the date the person submits an application to the date that they walk through the door and start working. And we identified 16 individual steps that it takes for that person to go through. And in particular, there's nine steps from the point that we choose them as a candidate to the point that they start working here with the county. Um, once we've identified those steps, we identify the time that it takes to go between step one to step two and so on. Um, and we identify that as essentially wasted time in the process. Um, by doing this, first of all, we can see how confusing it is, um, not only for us as managers that are hiring, but also for candidates that are going through the process. Um, but it also allows us to engage in a conversation about where the waste actually is and possible ways to remedy it and solutions to those. Hi, I'm Rachel Morris with the Emergency Medical Services Agency. So while observing the steps that you just heard about um, that come from the current value stream map, we learned a lot. Uh, the process, yes, it is often long. I think we all know that, that's why we're here. Um, and the system can be very difficult to navigate, both for hiring manager and candidate. Um, that was a repeat theme that we heard wherever we went, wherever we observed, um, that was something we heard. Uh, this really came into play for me when I was sitting in the room talking about this that I got an email from a candidate that we had offered a position to in my division and the email was basically, I'm so excited to come work for Contra Costa County, but I don't know what to do and I don't want to miss anything. So that really brought it into play for me, why we're here, why we're in this room, why we took this time to discuss this, because we don't want to miss this candidate either. Um, we also learned that, so previously it was mentioned that everything went paperless within the system using NeoGov. However, credentialing is still very much a paper-based process, and there also, the credentialing also happens in multiple sites. So since it is paper-based, you have time going back and forth between different sites for the credentialing, which extends the process. Um, also, the electronic systems that we do have are not being fully utilized. We do have systems in place like NeoGov and PeopleSoft. However, not everybody has access to those systems. So sometimes you have somebody that needs to ask another person a status, which again takes time, again extends the process. So if we can really come to utilize those systems more, that would help with this whole system. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christina Perez from Health Services Personnel. When we interviewed new hire employees and hiring managers, we found a common theme. Communication is a problem. The hiring process is confusing. Unless the candidate has an advocate helping them navigate the system. At times, the candidate and the manager felt lost. Sometimes because there were too many hiring requirements and also because they didn't know where the candidate was in the hiring process. In preparation for this event, we pulled some data from NeoGov. It is a three-month sample of all hires from an eligible list within health services. 
we found that the average time from when a candidate is selected until their first day on the job is 56.8 days. This graph shows the data. The high points are delays in the hiring process. As you can see, delays can happen at various steps within the process. There is definitely room for improvement. Hello, I'm Emily Arredondo with Public Health. From the data collected, we found that when a candidate starts the application process to when they start the first day on the job, it takes an average of 277 days. Um, the value added from the candidate's perspective is 2.5 days, which is what they view as value time while in the hiring process. Hello, I'm Elena Cruz with Health Services Personnel. So now that we have our value stream map, we've done some observations, we've collected some data. Um, everyone came up with at least one thing that they identified as a defect in the process. And so then we then took those main defects and come up with some solutions to help make it better. For example, the hiring process isn't clear to the managers or the candidates. Um, and getting the managers some training, uh, making them the new liaisons for the hiring process, and develop a checklist that they can provide. Hello, my name is Alex Johnson. I'm an HR system specialist with Central HR. I served on the data team, and I was a subject matter expert for NeoGov, our applicant tracking system. So the waste defect that we identified was that hiring managers just don't know where the candidates are in the process, and that's in addition to not being clear what the process itself is. So one of the ideas that we had thought to address this issue was to develop methods for the hiring managers to be able to check on the status, you know, to access that information. Um, and a way to accomplish this is to provide direct access for the hiring managers to look into NeoGov to see where the candidates are in the process. Uh, if they did have access, they'd be able to use the dashboards within NeoGov to check on the process them themselves and also help facilitate that hiring process with the candidate and make it a better candidate experience. Another defect we identified was that information needs to be entered into the system multiple times and into multiple different systems. And so uh, an idea people had was to develop interfaces to eliminate the duplication of errors and uh, duplication of work. So much of this can be um, actually accomplished by implementing integrations between NeoGov and PeopleSoft. But we also need to expand on the functionality currently existing in PeopleSoft in order to be able to make more efficient ways to update the position and job code attributes so that the work isn't being done completely in NeoGov where the, um, the system of record is concerned. That's where we really need to be focused on making those updates. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Tina Pruitt. I'm an HR manager here in Central HR. Um, another major defect that we identified with this process is that we have outdated, complex, and often conflicting rules and regulations. Um, a few of those are our personal management regulations, which are our merit system rules, our salary regulations, the county administrative bulletins, various board resolutions, the side letters and MOUs with our labor unions, and so on. So you can see we have a lot of information to consider whenever we're doing something. Um, we have a few ideas to address this problem. One is to create a document repository system where we could upload all of that information into one consolidated system instead of going to various different websites to find it. Um, and we would want to make that keyword search available. So any employee, whether they're in personnel or HR or just a member of the public who wanted to understand our rules and processes would have access to it. Um, the other big thing we talked about is that our personal management regulations um, were adopted in 1982. So I don't know how many of you remember where you were in 1982, um, but one of our team members said to me this morning that he wasn't even born in 1982. Um, a lot of our county employees fit into that category, and so it's time for us to kind of look at whether or not those rules are still applicable in 2019. So we've made some revisions, but a lot of them don't make sense. I'll give you a few examples. Uh, we have a rule that says that candidates on the eligible list cannot have tied scores. So we randomly throw a dice to determine who's going to be ranked higher on the eligible list um, in Excel. But, uh, we also have current employees that apply and compete through a competitive process to advance their careers within the county. 
And then because we have salary compaction and our salary regulations say that anything within a certain percentage is a transfer and not a promotion, we tell these employees that worked hard to advance their career that they're being treated as a transfer. We also use a one-size-fits-all approach to our recruitment efforts. We have a requirement that we have one active eligible list for any particular job classification, but sometimes the attributes and requirements of different jobs vary, and we're forcing managers to use a list that's not relevant to the needs for their position. And then finally, we want to reduce and eliminate all the different special rules that only apply to certain circumstances. So for example, we have deep class resolutions that give certain sets of rules for one specific class. We also have a rule of 50 certification rule for our clerical um, recruitments, which makes that process very cumbersome to administer, and those lists take a long time to even just certify out. So if we can reduce and eliminate all of those special exceptions, that'll speed up the whole process and give us a standard work that is easier and simpler to understand. Thank you. In our observation of occupational health, we found some possible defects. One that stood out was the lack of available appointments. Ideas that could help fix this problem would be to increase the number of appointments offered per day and to implement an electronic health record and scheduling system that could help decrease the number of missed appointments. We also felt a rapid improvement event at occupational health is needed for a deeper exploration into their workflow. So I'm um, Dora Regalado from Public Health. Now that you've heard um, our findings, our current state, some defects, some waste, some areas of improvement, um, we recognize as a group that one of the biggest areas that we're missing from our current hiring process is the human aspect. I think some way along the way we forgot that finding a job, looking for a job, is a, it's a very personal process. Given all this information, we've created um, a future state vision, and it is my pleasure to read it um, to you. Our vision is to develop a person-centered hiring process that is efficient, timely, transparent, and data-driven, contributing to Contra Costa Health Services being a preferred place to work in the Bay Area. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Marissa Elliott. I'm the new uh, nurse manager for the Occupational Health Program. So I'm going to introduce you to the value stream map for our future state. And based on, and in keeping with our vision statement that Dora just read, we are trying to be more focused on being candidate-centered. So as you can see, there are about half the number of steps as our current state. And there's much less time, which I'll get to in a minute. Some highlights of the things that we are proposing are a more user-friendly system where we can match the talents of an applicant with an actual job versus them having to go in and select who we could possibly select with their qualifications. As was mentioned before, a possible support liaison or navigator, a person that could walk them through the process, whether that be a person that's internal to personnel or a person that's in the department where they're going to eventually work. That would um, also include allowing them to have access to see the status of their application. So if they had the ability to go in and view where they were in the process, um, and, and that was um, the power that they had, that might also help eliminate emails and communications that they get from about six different locations currently. And lastly, we um, are proposing a pre-boarding visit or encounter that would include all of the stuff that they need to have done prior to being on board on the same day. So fingerprints, I-9, physical, farm test, labs, x-ray, treadmill if needed, possibly in the same day. It's showing you the value stream would change from, I don't know if you remember, an average of 277 days, which it is currently, to an average of 65 days. Good afternoon, my name is Noelia Gutierrez and I work in the office of the director. In 2015, I found out that my role in banking was gonna be eliminated. I was worried about becoming unemployed and applied for an entry-level position with Contra Costa County. It took four and a half months from the day I applied to the day I started working, which worked out for me because I had to work until a specific date in order to receive my severance package. But when I received my first paycheck, I was disappointed to see that I was earning much less than what was on my offer letter. So then I questioned my decision of accepting this offer over another high-paying banking job. This week, we interviewed recent hired, recently hired employees and found out that they had a negative hiring experience, which led them to feel undervalued and frustrated. We need to set the example and provide our future employees with the same respect and experience we would want them to provide our patients and the public. So we came up with this aim statement to improve the candidate experience by reducing the length 
of time from application to start date by 30% by implementing metrics to measure candidate satisfaction by November 30th, 2019. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Randy Sawyer, and I work in the Environmental Health and, uh, and Hazardous Materials Division. So we take the AIM statement, and we put together what's called a uh, driver, di driver diagram. Basically, what this does is assist us in apply, getting, achieving what we wanted, we set out in the AIM statement. So we set up some primary drivers, which you can see here, like person-centeredness. We've talked a lot about um, a customer, looking at the customer and how we can make it a better experience for them. Clear communication, efficiency, and metrics. And then we've developed also secondary drivers, which go to assist in uh, achieving the primary drivers. And there are transparency, uh, standardization, uh, simplification, training, technology, and accurate data. So you can see there's arrows going from each of those secondary drivers to the primary drivers. And you can see uh, for, to get person-centeredness, you will need to, be, you need to have transparency, you will need to standardize things, you need to make sure it's simplified so they can understand what it is, and uh, you just need to, you need to work with them in such a way that it works as we move forward. And you have clear communications. You also want to get clear communications. You want it to be transparent. You want it to be simple. And you also, again, want it to uh, be standardized so you're not getting different communications from different people about what to do. And then uh, we also have efficiency. Trans, uh, technology will help us with efficiency. Uh, standardization will help us in efficiency. All those things help drive the final product which you want to have. And then metrics will, we basically, technology and accurate data will help us develop metrics to see how we're doing over a period of time. From the secondary drivers, we actually can put an action plan together on how to address and make changes in the system. So our next steps, we need more mapping for, specifically for the first portion of the hiring process, from the time they apply to the time a candidate's chosen. So we need to have more mapping for that. Uh, we also want to do rapid improvement uh, events for occupational health, candidate communication, credentialing, applying ranking, and post-selection. I am Erica Jensen. I'm the assistant to the health services director. Um, and uh, we wanted to say some thank yous to the people who helped us this week. So it was a long week. Um, we were uh, all over different parts of the county. Um, I particularly wanted to uh, thank County Human Resources here in this building, as well as health services personnel and occupational health, because we sent what I'm sure felt like gangs of people to observe and take notes and um, uh, ask a lot of questions about what you all do. So thank you so much for that. Um, we also had some specialists uh, who we called upon for particular questions that were very helpful. Um, and then we had what was called a leadership uh, advisory team that met uh, almost every afternoon at 4.30. Um, and those were leaders from across the county as well as health services who helped give us feedback about how the team was doing. Um, and then the la uh, one of the last pieces was we also reached out to different occupational health providers uh, across the Bay Area actually about their workflow. Um, and finally, also, we had our sponsors, Diane Dinsmore, Anna Roth, and Durrett McCollum, who also really sponsored this work and gave us direction. So, um, great. And then now, I wanted to say how proud I was to be a workshop leader for this week for our team, um, who worked very hard over the week. And so I wanted to give uh, a round of applause to the team, as well as to the leadership advisory and the sponsors. Um, a lot of the, we brought some of the work so you could see. We had a conference room full of uh, flip charts and post-its, so we brought some of them here, and the team will um, stay around after if people want to ask any questions about that. Um, but I wanted to hearken back to some what my colleagues said. So this is part of this picture is um, of a woman named Eastine Cowder who worked in the rich uh, the Richmond shipyards during World War II. And so we here in Contra Costa County have a legacy of both employing people, especially people uh, who traditionally couldn't get paid jobs, such as women um, and African Americans and other people of color. Um, and these shipyards. Uh, used also, so they employed um, almost 60,000 people 
um, and the city of Richmond grew during that time. So the employment really changed the face of our community here in Contra Costa. Um, and these shipyards also were also all about improvement and productivity. So initially, the industry average to build a ship for World War II was 230 days. You'll notice that's less than the time that we currently have to hire someone. <laughs> Um, they, they improved that productivity to around 45 days, and actually one of the shipyards in Richmond uh, got it down to less than three weeks to build a full ship. So we here at Contra Costa have a legacy of employing people, we have a legacy of improvement, um, and we also have a legacy of equity. And employment contributes to people's health. It's one of the biggest contributors to people's health. So we as a health services department are really interested in making the employment process faster. We're really interested in employing people in our community here in Contra Costa, and we're really interested in making it better. So if they can build up ship faster, I think we can figure out this employment process. So thank you so much for being here for your time. I wanted to invite up Diane Dinsmore. Thank you everybody for coming. This is wonderful to see all these people here. Shows how important this process is, right? It affects every single person here. So I wanna thank Anna and her team for committing to this with us. Um, we don't have the lean expertise in central HR. And so we couldn't have done this without the, the partnership with health services. Uh, the impetus behind this, some of you may not be aware of this, besides the anecdotal, all of us wanting to make things better, um, was as a result of a Joint Commission Committee meeting where there um, was a question for the, from a member of the Board of Supervisors saying, well, why does it take so long? And there was some discussion about it and the impact of, of that delay in our ability to actually fulfill our mission as an organization. Um, and so Durrett and I put our heads together, and I want to thank Durrett for, for partnering with us in, in HR. Um, that has been a, a really beneficial relationship over the last couple of years. Um, and we said, well, what can we do? And we said, well, I think we need to really dig in and evaluate what's happening now so we can look at what we can do. So we actually will be reporting back to the Joint Commission Committee um, in March, I believe, uh, to give them a sense of where we are. Um, so th this approach is something that I think brings value to every single person in this organization. It's an approach that I really value in human resources. We don't have all the answers in HR, evidenced by the fact that it takes 277 days to hire somebody. Um, so I just want to let everyone know here publicly we are committed to the improvements that um, we're striving for and uh, to really making us a, a an example in the Bay Area and in California in terms of how we as a public sector employer can attract and make a positive experience for the individuals coming to work for us. So thank you, Anna. I want to thank Erica for putting that sobering data in front of us that you can build a ship faster than you can hire um, a staff member. And that was even in their poorest performance. Um, so. Thanks for that, Erica. Um, <clears throat> I also um, was thinking about, I looked up a couple of things, and so um, these are, uh, just to give you, going from number five up, these were the top uh, five songs in 1982. <laughs> um, Centerfold by the Jay Giles Band, Ebony and Ivory by Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder, I Love Rock and Roll, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, Eye of the Tiger by Survivor, and the number one song in 1982 was Physical by Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> so that's where we are, um, you know, and that, that's, you know, um, <clears throat> so Winston Churchill said, however beautiful your strategy is, occasionally you have to look at the results. So that's where we are. You guys, it's 2019, and I just wanted to also uh, give you a couple of data points. So I think some of the most powerful data that we uh, have seen today, um, aside from the 277-day cycle time that it takes to hire somebody, for somebody to apply and get hired here at Contra Costa County, and the less than 1% value, uh, added time. I think those are sobering sort of results. I, you know, I asked them to print the quotes out for you so you can bring these home with you because these are very powerful uh, pieces of data. 
Um, but I also want to give you, offer a couple other pieces of data. To do improvement work is really hard. It's hard. Um, I returned from Boston where I had done an improvement fellowship uh, in 2007, 2008. I came back in September of 2008. In February of 2009, 10 years ago this month, we introduced Lean. So there was a team of people. We went to Virginia Mason. We went to Theta Care. We went to Denver Health. We looked around the world at the best lean um, companies in healthcare specifically, but also beyond that. A bunch of us read the Toyota Way. Many of them, you'll see them on our um, bookshelves. We brought in Mike Rona, who ran uh, Virginia Mason and his partners to do intensive training with those with, uh, with us. And many are not in the room today, but for those who are in the room today who've gone through Lean, could you please stand up? So these are some of the people, and some of them I know went to Theta Care in also in February, which is, if you don't know, that's in Appleton, Wisconsin. <laughs> and we got snowed in and stuck there and um, all kinds of things. But then um, just to add to that, that was also 10 years ago this month was when we initiated the first change agent fellowship, which was sort of focused on building lean improvers from the inside out. If you're a change agent fellow, or a sponsor of a fellow, could you please stand up? Okay, so just to say, this is a small sampling of the, um, I, a, a breadth, a large breadth of people working across the health department, EHSD, um, and other departments here in the county. Uh, it it isn't, doesn't happen overnight. It, it is a deliberate march forward um, toward improvement. Um, so we began, and I just wanted to give you some history so that you understand the context in which this value stream map is occurring. We began in February of 2009. Um, we started with psych emergency uh, and opening the psych emergency to ambulance traffic. Um, we then moved to the ER emergency room and did a value stream mapping and lean events there. We then moved to the OR in the hospital, then perinatal. We went to the med surge units. Uh, we went then out into the clinics and we sort of transformed the lean into ambulatory care redesign. Then we went, actually we did then a stint in personnel. That was 2015. Um, we then went to the jail and then specialty behavioral health, uh, the behavioral health division. And now we're back um, in personnel with HR, which I think was a, a, you know, a design limiter the first time we should have had HR. So we kind of had this aha moment. Um, and, and we're still in all those other areas also, just so you know. That's hap there's continuous improvement going on across all those areas. And it isn't easy work. Um, so I just wanna acknowledge and thank the team for all your work, they get clipboards, they get stopwatches, they go out, they make direct observations, and they become the source of truth for the organization. I mean, it's just true that you could build a ship faster than you can actually hire somebody, and we have to accept that. We are the system, this is our system, um, and we can change it. Uh, that's what's so great about it. Um, it's it's daunting, but we can change it. Uh, and you know, make no mistake, breathtaking change has been introduced in the last ten years, and will be introduced in the next ten years. We have transformed the way we do care, and we will transform the way we bring on and manage people, and the, we will transform the way we seek out into the Bay Area, find the best and brightest, and get them here onto this team. That that is within reach, and um, I feel really excited that we have such a. Um, such a diverse group of people across the department and the county working on this. So thank you. Um, finally, I just wanna say um, before my, I can feel my breath leaving me, I want, I wanna encourage you who are in the room to go look at the value stream map um, because this value stream map will be followed up by, as you heard, rapid improvement events, which are a little bit more glitzy because that's when we start doing the improvement. But this value stream map is a lot of man hours. How many people were on the team? About 22. Um, so that's over 800 man hours aimed at creating that map for the system. Uh, it's, it, it takes a lot of commitment and dedication to kind of get out and get to this kind of data. Um, 
but go ahead and take a look at it and make sure you take some time to talk to the team members because they worked really hard. And uh, without, these pieces, with, without these data, we can't make the improvement. Um, finally, I wanna thank the, all, all the different coworkers back in your sites who sort of um, held down the, held down the um, work site while you, were all, uh, while you were all doing improvement work, because it, it takes both. It takes the um, people who are back at the site kind of covering for the improvement team and the improvement team, and it takes the improvement advisors, Erica, um, Karen, I don't see Karen in the room today, but Karen Schlein, who's not here, but she was there all week, uh, Amanda, Josh, um, lots of people come together to make up sort of the infrastructure to make this thing sort of move forward. Um, I want to acknowledge them. Um, but also to the team members, I want to um, thank your family, because I know you guys work like 12 hour days on these weeks. People don't really know that you come to work super early and they bring food and then they stay really late and then they get on the phone at night and they come and they do observations at all kinds of odd hours. So um, I hope you have a fun weekend planned with your family this weekend. Um, and I just want to thank you all for the work that you've done. Um, I'm excited to see uh, the improvements that we do. And I do think that we, um, I would like to sort of put a stake in the ground. I know we um, talked about a 30% improvement, but I kind of like this uh, metaphor that Erica has put out there, and I kind of would like to take it as a challenge. I would like to see um, if we can beat the time it took to build a ship. Um, and that, it sounded like the average time was 45 days and the stretch goal would be less than three weeks. And I do think that that would be a worthy goal for the people in our community and for our system. So um, I'm gonna like um, throw a little challenge out there to the team that I think that we should go for um, bringing on a person faster than it takes to build a ship. So thank you so much, you guys, for all your work. Um, I look forward to the work ahead. Thanks.